Good morning, everybody. Today is my birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you, and it happens to be Easter. We have some festivities planned for today. So for Easter and for birthday, and we're excited. So let's get this day started. Yeah. All right, let's get changed. We're ready. Let's go. So first on the list, Heineken Experience. So that is the first thing we're doing for Ryan's birthday. It should be really fun. I'll give you a little bit of a history lesson once we get over there. So in 1864, Gerard Heineken buys the Haystack Brewery here in Amsterdam. But it wasn't until 1873 that he put his name on the company. So then it becomes Heineken Brewery. The building that you see behind me was built in 1864 for the Haystack Brewery, and it is still in operation today and is now called the Heineken Experience, which is open to the general public for tours and tastings. And that's what we're about to do right now. Let's go. Happy Easter. Chocolate? Very good. The Heineken beer. What is it saying? It's really good. It's a chocolate made with Heineken beer.
creates a sugary liquid called wort. And I know we all smell beer, you know, haha. -ha. Maybe the party from yesterday, the hangover you're experiencing right now, who knows? But I'm looking for an ingredient that we can smell. No, it's actually the last ingredient. The yeast, the A yeast. You smell the esters of the A yeast. It's a fruity aroma. Experts say that if you have a really good nose, you can actually smell a hint of bananas. Anyone? No? Me neither. I think I need to drink a few more. No, I'm kidding. That smell comes better off when the beer's a bit warmer. But you don't want to drink a warm beer, of course. But yeah. So we just finished up at the Heineken experience. 
it was really cool. They invested a lot of money into that technology. Yes, as you can see from all the footage we gathered throughout the tour, um, there was a really neat kind of experience at the end. And if you get a chance to go to the Heineken factory experience, do it yeah. because you won't be let down. If you like beer, definitely. They definitely feed you a lot of beer in there. Um, learning about the history was really nice, but also the interactive experience that they did, which was very impressive. Um, but I did like learning about the history of it. The biggest, um, the biggest piece of history that I didn't even realize was that once Prohibition ended in the United States, Heineken was actually the first um, beer company to make it into the U.S. They apparently, like, once Prohibition ended, there was a race to see who the first beer was going to land in the U.S. And um, Heineken shipment from Rotterdam to New Jersey was the first to land in the U.S. And they take pride in that. In yeah. six days after Prohibition, Roosevelt in 1933 ended Prohibition and they were the first boat to arrive in America six days after it was ended. Six days after Prohibition ended, they, they uh, got their beer distributed into the U.S. So that was the most interesting piece of information that I think I learned today. That and then also in the beginning they outsourced their bottles. Different bottling companies would do the bottling for them so they wouldn't get the same consistency so they didn't change that until like 1920 I think. It yeah was, they like started that. bottling their own beers because they couldn't control the amount of air that was in the bottle, the amount of light that got through the bottle. Um, so they, they started going in-house, just manually filling bottles uh, because they just wanted full control over the beer. And now their uh, factory can do 720,000 bottles in an hour. And so their current brewery is actually down in the south of Holland. So it's not here in Amsterdam. It's a huge facility, the largest beer factory in the entire continent of Europe and it is in South Holland um, but they still have headquarter buildings here and then of course the Heineken experience but we're gonna continue on with this day and we will see you guys at the next spot yes because it's birthday festivities and Easter happy Easter let's do this Next stop, the famous Amsterdam Sex Museum. So I don't know how much we're gonna get to film in there just because I don't want YouTube to be like, no, that's inappropriate. So we'll film what we can and we'll just kind of describe the rest of it. Um, if you've been to the Sex Museum here in Amsterdam, you know all about it. If you haven't, we'll try to fill you in as much as we can. And then the plan is after that, we're gonna head back south and go to the Mocha Museum. Um, that we should be able to film no problem, hopefully if they let us film inside. Um, but I'm excited about that one because there's a lot of art installations in there. There's Banksy in there. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. All right, so we got distracted in Primark for a bit. Um, so that's something that we really don't have in the US. I think there's like two locations in there in the most obscure places, but it's definitely a European staple, so. Next time we come, we'll bring. We'll have room we're gonna bring an bag. empty suitcase because we just don't have the room to bring stuff back. Because we saw so many things, we were like, we could use this, we could use that, but no room to take it back. Yeah. Next, so time. next time, gives us an excuse to come back. Oh, which pride flag. We really don't need. An we don't need an excuse to come back, but we'll say that. Let's spend money on a plane ticket so we can stock up on cheap clothes, right?
the sex museum was really interesting and fun. It's very quirky. Um, it's in like a four-story walk-up building that you have different things on different levels. Um, what would you think? Yeah, I mean, it's when in Amsterdam. It's yeah. something you go and see. Just kind of like the red light district last night. It's yeah. Not- something you have to go and see just because it's here. It's famous. Go do it. It's kind of a one and done situation. Yeah, it doesn't take that long. Um, yeah, it's just interesting. The yeah. history of, of sex. sex. <laughs> and since he does mention the red light district, um, so as you saw last night, we did um, meander through the red light district. It is illegal to take videos and pictures. It's not just frowned upon. There are actual, like, police officers that will prosecute if you do that. Um, so don't if you're going to go there. Um, but it was very interesting. Um, it's very... There are zero inhibitions uh, in the city, especially when it comes to the red light district. Um, something you... It's one of those things where you've always heard about it, you've learned about it, but to actually see it in person is very interesting. Yeah, I would add to it that those gals that are in the windows... <laughs> My hat is off to them because I could not stand there. But I would think you would have to have, like, almost either a built-up armor or just not have a care in the world. Yeah. And your body is your temple. And-, and it's one of those things, especially in the United States, where sex is such a taboo topic, um, whereas here it's the stark opposite. I mean, yeah, prostitution so- is legal. Um, it's very front and center out in the open. Um, so if it's something you're not accustomed to, obviously it is a shock, but um, it was very interesting. Also, what we noticed was a lot of um, tourists, uh, a group of like guys, we'd say like eight guys, and one of their friends would come out and... Everyone would cheer, would cheer and clap. I mean, it was hilarious. About... Also, that would be so embarrassing. But if I mean... If you were to go in there, but I mean... It's also some of them like try to sneak in and sneak out. One even had his like his head down as he was walking yeah. out. Um, his belt was unbuckled. Like <laughs> it was just so like hurry up and get out. Like so we just took the number two tram from um, up where the sex museum is down here to Museum Plain, uh, which is where the Rex Museum, Van Gogh Museum, and all of that is. Which we're going to come back to tomorrow. But today we have a reservation at the Mocha Museum. Um, I know there's some Warhol, some Banksy, and some other art um, installations in there. So we're really excited to do that. We are a little bit early. Our reservation is not until six fifteen. There is a little street market here, and we're getting a little hungry, so we're going to try to find some like fries or See, some- something that we can uh, snack on before the museum. Yes. So we don't know if they allow filming in there or not, um, so stay tuned for that. Yeah. Um, But we'll pick it up afterwards, yeah. There wasn't any filming in the... The sex museum was no filming. They specifically said that, and it's not something I would put on YouTube anyway. Yeah. Um, So go see it for yourself. Yep, definitely.
porte-monnaie. Like you wanted, did you forget that code? Why is our love it one sided? It should really be give and take. Fill you up and leave me empty. Baby, was that my mistake? Covering these feelings, going through changes. I'm just so mad right now, I can't even think straight. So I'ma just tweet it and delete it. Knowing you won't read it Before we get too far away I need to clear my mind I'd rather just tweet it and delete it Before we cross the line And we reach a point we can't be All right, so we just finished up here at the Mocha Museum. Now, this is not something that we pre-planned before we came to Amsterdam, but I'm very glad that we chose to do that. Yes, definitely. We saw an advertisement for it yesterday when we were getting on the bus to go to the Movie garden. Pop, yeah. I'm not gonna try to say it, he just said it. Um, we saw the advertisement and we saw that Banksy was here and we're like, we need to go. So I said, let's go today because it's my birthday and I get to choose where we go. <laughs> but the Banksy exhibit was very impressive. There was a lot of, there is a tin can rolling down the sidewalk. Um, there was a lot of artwork in there that was very impressive. Um, yeah. And there was like an immersive digital experience. Oh my goodness. It was like, <laughs> there is a lot of rubbish out here right now, and I think it's just because it's been so windy, but um, at the very end, what you saw, obviously there was like an immersive digital experience. It was really cool. Yeah. But now we're going to go to the hotel, drop off all of the things that we purchased today, which hopefully we get at home. Um, and then I don't, I really don't want to lay down and relax because I don't want to fall asleep like we've been doing. Um, so I think we're just going to power on through maybe down some water hydrate up and then get back out there so let's see where the rest of the day takes us let's go So good. It's gone. So gone. 